So the test I'm gonna do with all these pans is the functional test, how light is it, how much material can it hold, and how does it feel while using it. The next test will be a strength test, which includes a rock drop and a flexibility test. And of course, the last test, how far can you throw it? So the first pan we're gonna test is the hex pan. So this pan is made by the prospecting channel. I've never used this, I don't know how to use it, but I think the idea is pretty simple. It's, it's still a regular pan, except it has flat sides. I'm gonna give each one of these pans my rating. One out of five nuggets. For the functional test, how light is it? I don't even know why I actually added that because all these pans are relatively light. Yeah, this is, this is a light pan. Now before we do any testing, we must first dig out a spot. So believe it or not, in this video, I am not looking for gold. I'm not gonna be chasing it to try to find the best spot. As long as I can pan it down to the black sand, that's good enough. But of course, if we can find gold, that's even better. Now anytime you use a brand new pan from the manufacturer, there is gonna be a little bit of oily film on it. So it's always best to do what's called seasoning the pan so that that film goes away. You can use sandpaper or you can use gravel. But the best way to use it, in my opinion, is just to run material. Now, how much material can it hold comfortably? Ugh. That is still pretty heavy with one hand, but I believe this is a good solid amount of material to pan using this pan. Now, how does it feel? So, the feeling test will be subjective to your needs, but I'm still gonna give you my first impressions. So, I already like the fact that it has flat sides to it. For some reason, the round pans, I kinda don't like. They're comfortable and I'm used to them, but I would love to give these flat sides more of a try. I actually don't know if you're supposed to use one side or you're supposed to use this point here because this has the same riffle across it. All right, let's just see what we got here. If we got anything. All right, so there is some black sand in there. I don't see any gold, which is fine. Now before I tell you how it felt and go over my whole rating, here's the next test. The strength test. How flexible is it? It's strong. Mm -hmm. It's kind of stiff. It passes. So anytime you're out prospecting in this beautiful world, there's a risk of dropping a big rock on your gold pan. Sorry, pan. Okay, so the fact is, when you have a stiff gold pan, it is prone to breaking. Now this can easily be fixed. You can straighten all this out. You can cover it with glue. There's there's a few ways to fix it, but realistically, with a hex pan, try to never drop a rock on it. Now the distance test, because you never know when you're gonna use the skill to defend yourself. Ah, yeah, pretty good. So my overall thoughts on the hex pan. I'm not gonna lie, I do like this gold pan. I really do like these flat sides. However, for me, I wish these sides were a lot longer, like if it was a square, because when this pan is full and you're panning, it just feels like the material that's on the side gets pushed towards the center and it just, it just feels like it's losing stuff on the side, like there's not enough pressure on the side, so everything just falls out. Now what I like about this when you're panning is this grip right along here. Sometimes that's accidental from the manufacturers, but I really like it because I like panning with one hand and if I can grip it from down there, chances are I'm gonna use this more often. But as you saw, the stronger and stiffer it is, the more chance it's gonna actually break. So overall, I'm gonna rate this gold pan two out of five gold nuggets. For the next pan, I'm gonna go with these. Now these are all relatively the same, there are a few little differences but the two closest to each other are these two here so I'm gonna test these two at the same time so how light are these pans they're fairly light they're small they're compact you can pretty much fit them anywhere how much material can these hold you ask great question Tim we will find out So both of these pans can hold about the same amount of material, but these pans fill up nicely if you're just crevicing or you're just testing some new spots where you don't want to bring a huge pan. Now how do they feel? So what did we find in the pink pan? Any pink nuggets? Just black sand, don't see any, oh, I might have saw gold, but maybe not. Green pan, ah, there we go. Right there, two pieces of fly poop. So the strength test, we gotta see how flexible these pans are. This one is obviously pretty flexible. Are you okay? It's flexible, but still a little stiff. Yeah, this one feels a lot more stiff. It's pretty good. I'm sorry, Martin Prospecting. I didn't really expect to break it. 
All right, just as I predicted, another stiff pan met its fate. I'm not gonna drop a rock on this pan because that, that would just be me. So how far can you throw this pan? Yeah. This test is stupid. So my take on these gold pans is, you know, I like them. I like every pan for different reasons. So this pan, it's small, it's easy to use. You can put it anywhere. I like that grip around the bottom here so I can easily one hand it if I want. But again, it's stiff, which makes it a little more weak, especially if you drop a rock on it or a crowbar hits it or you accidentally step on it. Now this pink pan is not far off. It's a little more stiff if you haven't already noticed. And it actually doesn't have that nice grip on the bottom. But the best thing about this gold pan is that it is pink. It doesn't show the gold very well when you do find it but it's pink overall my rating on this pan two out of five nuggets again this one one and a half out of five nuggets only because it's pink for our next pan let's try the patea pan how light is this gold pan hello it's actually lighter than it looks it sits lighter when you're not even touching it now i can only imagine that this pan can hold a lot of material <laughs> all done I say this is good enough. It's not really super filled, but that's kind of only because I, I've never used this pan and it looks heavy. It's actually not that bad. Now the way you're supposed to use this pan is gonna feel a little strange to me. I've never done this before, but I've seen Chris from Vogus Prospecting do it. And I know how to do it, but it's still gonna be weird. The idea is you fill it up with water and you just spin it around and, until you're done. I'm pretty sure as you spin it around, you're supposed to slowly let material off the sides. Again, as long as we find black sand, I'm happy. To avoid the potential of me losing gold, spinning it too hard, uh, I'm just gonna pan the rest of it like I normally would. I just went in the river and I kind of just washed the material away and we did find some black sand. So that is a success. However, I think I would need more practice with this pan to really give it an accurate, how does it feel? But for somebody new to this pan, I don't know how I feel just yet. So for the flexibility test, watch me bend this thing. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. It's quite stiff as it's metal. You can see maybe a slight twist when you really push it, but you know, uh, it's not gonna break trying to trying to force bend it, that's for sure. Will the rock say the same thing? Okay, make sure my feet are away from it. Here we go. This is gonna be loud. Ah, gosh, that was loud. I don't know if you guys can pick that up, but there's clearly a dent in the pan now. That might affect performance a little bit, especially when you're swirling around, or it could act as a nugget trap. Oh yeah, you can feel it right here. But also, because it's metal, it wouldn't take long to kind of get it all flat again. So yeah, I don't think a rock is really an issue. I really do like the idea of this gold pan. There's been several occasions where I wanted to shoot a video using it, but for whatever reason, I just haven't done it yet until now. To me, even though I suck at using this gold pan and have no experience using it, it just feels like as you're spinning it around carefully, any gold that's in the pan will stay in the pan. It doesn't feel like it's just gonna fly out or like you gotta push it out with the water. It's just, it feels more natural to me. And I feel like this has probably been around for way longer than we think. Only recently it just got reintroduced back into prospecting. And it's also a hat. What I don't like about it though is it is big. It's really big. It's gonna be hard to move around in your pack sack. And for my prospecting pleasures, it's not something that I would typically just bring along. I'm gonna rate this three and a half, maybe to four nuggets out of five. Do you guys notice what gold pan is missing? It's Yay! the turbo pan. Now I'm gonna get rid of the, I'm gonna get rid of the how light is it test because it's kind of dumb. But we're keeping the throwing test because that's not dumb. How much material can it hold? I feel like that test is dumb too because it really just depends on how much material you want to use. From what I've seen, you use this gold pan the same way you would in the pan that you just saw. Except the only difference is once you're down low, you pan it out as there's riffles on the side. The turbo pan. What makes this twirling a little different than the last one is that you have these riffles across. And as you spin it clockwise, it's supposed to move the material down through these riffles into the center. And once you get down low enough, then you can use these riffles to pan it out and see how much black sand we've got. I'm not gonna lie, this is a little bit awkward. All right, so I already have a few things to say about this gold pan. I'll explain those in a minute. As you can see, we have some black sand and gold. 
gold. <laughs> I wasn't really expecting to find any gold, and I can't judge this pan on the gold we found because it could literally just be the spot that I'm in, and maybe I'm just really good at using this pan. But this test is not about the gold we find. So the flexibility test. It's really important to have a flexible gold pan. You want something that's gonna last. <laughs> In my defense, I'm pretty strong. So this pan actually exploded. So the turbo pan is pretty flexible until it's not. It has a breaking point. And just like the pink pan, it won't be nice of me to do the rock test. All right, so I kind of wish I had a spare turbo pan so I can kind of hold it and demonstrate it, but as you saw, the turbo blew a gasket. What I do like about the turbo pan is that it has a wide bottom. It has a wide surface area for material to, to get down. I'm trying to say this right. The bottom surface of the pan, there's more bottom of pan. Big surface bottom. The turbo pan has a big surface on the bottom, which allows gold to settle faster than a non-flat pan. Another thing I like is the grooves that lead to the center of the pan because as you're spinning clockwise, all the heavy material just kind of gets organized down to the bottom. What I didn't like about it is it felt like it was really hard to get all the material down into the little bowl at the bottom. And because of that, you're kind of forced to just start panning and then all the material that's stuck up in these riffles, which could be gold, goes back to the top of the concentrates and then you're forced to shake it again and, and try to organize it. It just felt really weird. For me, the amount of time it's gonna take for me to learn how to use a Gold pan properly and get good at it, I could be doing maybe twice as much with a regular gold pan that I'm comfortable with. For Pioneer Poly, the turbo pan is one and a half nuggets out of five. Okay, so I know you guys have been eyeing up this beauty of a banjo pan, but we're not quite there yet. But for the next pan, I wanna use the classic steel pan. Holding this gold pan makes me feel like an old timer. Hey, this is my gold pan. That's what they used to say. So how does this gold pan feel? It feels good. I really like the sound of it. Hearing the gravel scratch on the metal, it just sounds good. If you've never had the opportunity to try an old steel gold pan, I highly recommend you give it a try. Not only does it feel so good, but it allows you to become one with the miners who stood before us. Okay, yes sir. Black sand and plenty of gold. Plenty of goldnesses. It is hard to see with this pan, but it's there. Is it flexible? Ugh. A little bit. It's a little flexible, but it's it's solid. Okay. I tricked you. Ah, pretty sure I dented it. <laughs> ah, there. Brand new. Ah. I like the size of it. I like how light it is. You can still pack it up. You can still take it anywhere. I love the sound of the material when it's when you're shaking it underwater. And if you have this pan and you don't really use it or use it once in a while, it will rust and naturally be nice and solid for the gold to stick down. Even though this pan doesn't have any riffles, not once did I feel like the gold was gonna slip out. And it doesn't have that little groove that I like to grip, but it doesn't matter because the weight of this pan with material in it, you can hold it right here and it's, it's still solid. It doesn't feel like it's gonna slip. So this pan and this one, which is virtually the same, in this size, so far it's my favorite. So after a few minutes of hard consideration, I'm gonna rate these small steel gold pans a four and a half out of five, but only because I'd rather have riffles and the gold was hard to see. So before we begin our next test, let's go for a walk. So I've had this gold claim for maybe four years and I don't plan on getting rid of it, but I might get rid of a couple other claims that I have. In order to expand, I need resources, which is a perfect segue to say, I have a store open. You can get some Pioneer Poly merchandise, toques, they're limited edition. When they're gone, they're gone. And these beautiful hoodies along with a whole bunch of other stuff. Now, obviously you don't have to get any of this stuff. I still love you, it, it doesn't matter. But if you want a cool gift for a birthday or Christmas or Halloween or Easter or or to throw off a cliff or in the water or whatever you want to do, pioneerpoly.com. I have some cool stuff there for you to check out. Okay, so I'm starting to get really bored of using gold pans. So this is the biggest pan that we have in, in the lot. Uh, maybe second biggest. Stay tuned to the next one. We're going to use the banjo pan. It's big and it's light. They're all going to be light. I can already feel how flexible it is. 
Are you bored yet? <laughs> okay. Just trying to get out of the reflection here. We found gold. That's a good sign that there could be gold nearby. Found a piece of turbo pan. This pan is quite flexible, and I believe I cracked it somewhere when it was full of material. Ah. See, normally, on a normal occasion, yeah, you're not gonna be like, hey, Tim. I'm just doing this, obviously, because I'm trying to test it. My predictions with this rock here is it's not gonna break. It doesn't feel like it's actually gonna break. It doesn't feel too stiff, but you never know. This pan will not break. Just for fun, let's go again. Yeah. Oh. Oh look, more turbo pan. <laughs> so this pan is big. It's actually so big that I can't really grip it where I like to grip it. And even when it's full, like the metal pan, it's too slippery. I can't grip it like the metal pan. So I always just have to use two hands on it, which is probably the normal thing to do, but it's not something that I enjoy doing. I like using two pans, at, I like using two hands at first, and then I just like to switch to one hand. It can hold a lot of material, which is good, but I, I think it like it kind of defeats its own purpose. The reason why you get a big gold pan is so you can fill more material in it. But when you fill it up, it becomes so flexible, it start, it's kind of hard to, con it's much harder to control. The fact that it's a black pan lets the gold stand out more, but hides the black sand. But I do like how it's solid. It doesn't break when you drop a rock on it. It can also be used as a hat. And I think overall, based on my own preference, I'm gonna say, two out of five gold nuggets. Okay, so as far as I understand, you're supposed to fill the gold bearing area full of material, and then you're supposed to shake it like this with under the water, and then you're, you're supposed to kind of let it all roll down the sluice, shake it, roll that down the sluice, shake it, and then you add more material. Now, I'm not sure if you're supposed to bring the material back into that section, shake it, and then bring it down, or you're literally just supposed to add material in there while this material's sitting in here and then disturb it again and let it roll out. But either way, we're gonna give this banjo pan a run for its money or I'm just gonna try it the best I can and so I really don't know what to expect here. This pan has been on the back of my mind for a while, but I've just been hesitant to give it a try. I have my predictions, but let's see how it do. So I filled it up the way I think I should fill it up, and I'm just gonna do this with one hand and just try to take you along here with me. So I'm just mixing up, ow! Oh, what was that? Oh, I struck a cord or something. So I'm mixing up all the muck material. It's actually a really nice material that I just found. So you shake it back and forth like this, and then you run it down the sluice. So it's just like gold panning, using riffles, but you're actually using a sluice box. Now it's probably gonna make it a lot easier if I don't have big rocks in here, but for this demonstration, I don't think it really matters. Down the sluice you go. I'm gonna get rid of some of these rocks here. Shake, 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 down the sluice. I think even using two hands, this is just super awkward. Okay, so I got all the material in the little bowl there to go down the sluice. And I think this is when you're supposed to dip it into the bucket and then repeat. So I don't see any gold in there. There's some yellow rocks, but that's not gold. I'm just gonna get this material and kind of put it back into here and see if we can backwash whatever's in that trap. Okay, so I, I did my best trying to get the material out of there. I don't see any gold in there. And so now this, I'm gonna back pan. Oops. What I had to do was actually took out the sluice in there and I cleaned it all out, put it in a regular gold pan, and I actually have one little piece of poop, fly poop, in there. So gravity does work in a banjo pan as well. Durability test. How flexible is it? It's pretty flexible. It's also pretty stiff. So before I begin this rock test here, I do wanna say that I feel bad breaking these pans. I know a lot of the people who created these pans, like the banjo pan here, his name's Mike Pong, really, really nice guy. But I'm doing this for prospecting science. Oh. 
All right, so if a rock drops on your banjo pan, you are in trouble. Oh, there's instructions on the back. Keep away from Polly. I'm gonna keep this one short. I like the idea where you can sluice the material. Here in British Columbia, sluicing is illegal. So anytime I can get away from sluicing legally, I'm a happy camper. However, having a sluice in a gold pan, in my opinion, kind of defeats the purpose of using a gold pan. It shouldn't be called a pan in any way if it's not really a pan. When I did try to use the sluice, I found that all the material just kept getting bunched up here. I know that I did have some rocks in there, but even when that was clear, it's like every time I would use this to get the water to come out, I'd need to dip it in to get more water and then everything would just come back into the pan it was it was just hard to use now if you're experienced using this gold pan and you're finding gold all the power to you but in my opinion you're far better off using a regular gold pan because you're going to process more material you're going to get more done the learning curve is way easier and to me it's just really gimmicky. I realized I never gave it my rating at the river, so for this one, I have to give it a one out of five nuggets. So this gold pan is really easy for me to review because I use this almost every day and I literally have a hundred of these. These super sluice gold pans are fairly light, easy to use, and feel good in the hands. That's why in 99% of my videos I am using one. See I pan that down real quick and we have one piece of fly poop. <gasps> I almost forgot. Yeah. Flexibility test. I've done this a million times because I've had this pan forever. They're pretty solid. I've never tried actually bending it hard enough though, so let's see. <laughs> oh, holy cow! They are a little flexible, but uh, how does it compare to Dwayne Johnson? I know this isn't really necessary, but I know how durable these pans are. <laughs> I spoke too soon, Mr. 97. I've never had one of these pans break. I've had several rocks fall on them, but I've never had them break. Mind you, I've also never had a rock be thrown from the height that I threw it down on. I'm actually gonna try throwing it to the rock over there. I'm gonna throw it as hard as I can. Oh, did it go in the river? I don't know where it went. Oh, it did go in the river. I use these pans all the time. Not because they're my favorite either. I am so used to using them. They have that nice grip that I was telling you about. I can, I can use them with one hand. They have those inside riffles right there. They're pretty durable. Not as durable as I thought. I don't really have anything bad to say about it, except for the fact that they're not as durable as I thought. But you can fill these up. You can fill them up with as much material as you want. I've done it so many times on my other videos. They're really easy to use. You can use two hands. If you're strong enough, you can use one hand. So I'm a little disappointed disappointed but these Garrett super sluice pans I have to rate this now with the testing that we just did three maybe three and a half gold nuggets out of five yeah. so last but not least <laughs> it looks like a smiley face the gold claw pans you must try it before you judge it I'll just say that now I've used these pans once before but I never went back to them not because I didn't like them or anything but just because I just always forget to bring it and like I said before I'm just so used to using that big super sluice pan that I that I just showed you now I could test all three of these but because these two are the same and and just for variety differences, I'm just gonna test these two at the same time. Little pan. Really just a scoop of material is all you need. And for the bigger pan, maybe five of these in there. So what's different about these gold pans is you don't shake the material like you normally would and then you bring it out of the water. I believe these things just stay under the water. So mix up the material. I don't know if I should have got the clear one because it's actually harder to see. You just shake it underwater and you slowly lean it forward like that and you just keep shaking. You shake, 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 shake. And you think that I'd be losing gold while doing this, but I'll explain why you don't in a minute. All right, so now that you have all the material in there, you can either pan it this way, or you just do the same thing on this side. But because I'm not a professional at this, I'm just gonna leave it right there. And some of you might actually enjoy this, looking under here to see if you can see any gold. Now, it doesn't really excite me, so I'll just wash it down a bit here. 
And I don't see any gold. Maybe I did this wrong. Because this gold pan is underwater the whole time, the gold will drop down and it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop to take a breath of air. It's the best way I can explain it. It's continually dropping. So once it's at the bottom and you're shaking it, it's just sliding along the bottom. It doesn't need to be turbulent again. And you see that really big riffle at the very top there? That actually stops a lot of the material. And if it does end up going over, you have a couple more riffles that it will stop at. Now I can try to explain the gold claw and how it works as hard as I can. And I don't think I can explain it the way it should be explained. So just check out Gold Claw and see their instructional video or watch Chris from Bogus Prospecting do it. Now I'm gonna try the little pan here. It's the same thing, I just stratify it down and then I slowly shake it forward. If you're wondering why I don't classify, it's just, if there's a big enough piece of gold in here, it's, rock is not gonna matter. See, look how steep I am. I'm staying under the water. I'm gonna flip it around and do the same thing. I'm actually just gonna pan it out from here the way I normally would. So after further inspection, there was one piece of gold in here somewhere, but it is really small. Okay, so for the fun part, I don't want to fully test this pan because it's clear and it's kind of neat. So I'm going to use just the blue one. Woohoo! It's uh, it's quite flexible and stronger than I thought. The mini one. Yeah. Look, more turbo pan. So it's flexible enough where I think it's gonna hold up, but it's also stiff enough where it could actually break. My prediction is it's gonna crack, but it won't break. Well, that's the same thing. Oh no, our rock's falling down the cliff. Let's try again. So what I think is happening here is that because it's so narrow, it actually gives it strength. It's just like an egg. Eggs are strong. Oh no, another rock falling down the cliff. Oh, ow! Bounced back on my foot. So for the rock test, they passed. Ha! Huh, I don't care. So what is my overall take with the gold claw pan? I don't like how they feel in your hands. Like I said, with one hand, it doesn't feel right. But I do like that long, flat, flattish surface. That feels more safe to me. It feels like I'm not gonna lose gold, especially with this deeper riffle. And I do like how you're supposed to keep it under the water the entire time. If I didn't see other people use these pans and have good success, I would probably just say it's another gimmick and why would you why would you use it? Now this pan, I like how it's really small. If you were to use this gold pan in the same weight that was round, I just feel like it might not be able to fit in your pocket as easy as this would. And I believe this is actually called a pocket pan. It, it doesn't say on the back, but I, I heard that from somewhere. If you're out prospecting, you're not really bringing gear with you and you just want to have the option to test a spot or two, I do recommend having something small like this in your, in your pack sack. Um, I'm really gonna try not to base my opinion on this off of the results of other people that I've seen have with, the, with these gold pans. So based off my experience and how I feel about it and how long it might take me to, to learn how to use it, I'm just gonna say two and a half, maybe three gold nuggets out of five. I'm just gonna stick to a regular gold pan. So what is my professional conclusion, you ask? Well, physics works the same. As long as you can keep the heavy concentrated material at the bottom of the pan till you're done the whole process, you got yourself a working pan, my friend. So the question doesn't become what is the best gold pan or what's the worst gold pan or what gold pan can find you the most gold, but rather how good are you at using said pan and are you on good ground? Now, if you've been using the banjo pan for years and it's your favorite, you're relatively fast at it and you don't lose any gold, I salute you, you crazy musician. But if you're new to prospecting and you're looking for your first pan, you're probably gonna hate me for saying this, but any pan should work. Just get out there and get started. The more you use a pan, the better you'll get at it. The more gold you find, everyone's happy. But if you're a seasoned panner and you have a favorite pan, there is no use to change it. Just keep doing what you're doing. You are probably doing fine. Like I said, I do feel bad for breaking these pans, but it was for science, for prospecting science. So which one of these pans was your favorite? Which gold pan didn't you see in this video? Should I do more of these durability tests in the future? If you saw a gold pan in this video that you liked, in the description below, I have Amazon affiliate links where you can get one of these gold pans and all proceeds go towards making more videos for you to enjoy. Check out pioneerpoly.com to get yourself some merchandise. Check out Patreon, become a supporter, blah, blah, blah. I'm tired, I'm gonna go home. Goodbye.